What's up you guys? I'm John Turner and welcome back to What's the Table. Thank you so much for joining us again today and spending your time with us. Today we're going to show you how to cook up a wild rabbit. Normally, we'd be doing this as part of a catch clean cook video and Ryan and I did do some rabbit hunting a couple weeks ago, which was awesome. We had a good time doing it. We've never done that before. The hunt was absolutely awesome. We made some new friends. Um, got to get outside and enjoy nature a little bit. We got to see the dogs work. But the one thing that that hunt was missing was a rabbit. We didn't see a rabbit all day, but the dogs were on rabbits. And actually, after Ryan and I left, we had to get to a basketball game. Uh, those guys did get on some rabbits. I think they wound up killing seven that day. So maybe we were the problem. I don't know. Uh, but the problem is, I did promise Afton that we were going to have rabbit for dinner. And listen, as the old adage for fishing goes, a bad day fishing beats a good day working. The same is kind of true with hunting. I don't think that you actually have to pull the trigger in order to have a successful hunting trip. We had uh, good fellowship, made new friends, and that's a big part of what hunting and being a part of a hunt club is actually about to me. Ryan and I got to spend a lot of time together and had some new experiences, which I definitely want to do again. So we're going to show you a little bit of how to cook up a rabbit. It's going to be delicious and we're looking forward to this meal. Maybe next year we'll have a successful hunt. All right, so let's go ahead and quarter out our rabbit and get this thing ready to cook. So to get started on these front quarters, we're just gonna lift up this front leg and just feel with your fingers where that shoulder blade kind of comes into the body. Just let your knife kind of follow down on that line. This stuff is so tender, it's just falling away. It doesn't even feel like you have to disjoint it or anything like that. So we got a good looking front quarter. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Flip this guy over. Again, kind of lift that uh, leg up and just let your knife fall down underneath that um, shoulder or elbow joint. And it just comes right off. It feels like all you're cutting is the meat. Let's cut this last little bit. There we go. Front quarter's done. Let's see if we can do something similar down here on these uh, high quarters. And we'll just start up here at the top of the hip and just let the knife fall down. Now this one has, I mean, everything's just a little bit thicker than it is on the front quarters and it feels almost like, yeah, that was it. Okay, so what you wanna do here is just go ahead and bend that hip backwards and dislocate that joint. And then the only thing you have to really worry about it looks like is cutting the meat free. So that actually wasn't bad. That was pretty easy and that's a good looking cut of meat. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now this time I think I'm just going to learn my lesson and go ahead and pop that hip joint. And then we'll just start working down from the top. Follow that, uh, follow that hip bone along. And then we'll flip it over. I'm going to go ahead and cut the bottom side as well. go and just pull that last little bit free there we go now we've got our rabbit quarters and we'll start working in a second on let's just see if we can get some tenderloin and backstrap off this thing okay so to get this started we just want to feel with your fingers on either side here where that rib cage kind of ends and then just put a little cross cut there to start to separate that tenderloin and then just um, follow with your fillet knife follow um, all the way down either side of the spine here and it's really really tender meat and so uh, it's just going to start to your knife's just going to kind of fall all the way through uh, and start to separate that tenderloin from the bone just continue to work that free I might not have finished separating it, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut by this rib cage one more time. And then you just wanna work it away from this um, little piece of side meat uh, that's still connecting it, connected to it. Cut that free on both sides. Perfect. And now, whoops, cut that little piece. Now we've got, I mean, that's a really good looking uh, tenderloin. And we'll do that on the other side. There we have it, looking good.
Okay, and looking this over, it looks like we don't have much waste at all. There's hardly any meat on those ribs. I think we did well. All right, so the first step is to go ahead and season up our meat, and then we're gonna sear it in our Instant Pot. So we just wanna season all the cuts of meat on both sides with salt and pepper. Okay. Of course you do. Here, why don't you be in charge of the pepper? Just don't do too much. Just shake it over there. Shake it up higher, like this. Don't breathe it in. I can smell it. Alright, that's good. Let's get a little bit of salt on here. I'm gonna do this part because you don't have salt too much. Actually, I, I do do a lot of salt. I probably do too much salt. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna put some salt in here. Alright, that's good. Alright, so we're gonna put some salt in here. We'll flip it over and we'll do the other side real quick. this in the Instant Pot, um, brown this on all sides just for, it's not going to take more than a couple minutes and then we'll take that back off and we'll start browning the other ingredients. Okay. I've never done this before. We usually sear all of our meat uh, and brown the other ingredients in a pan. At some point I'm going to have to learn how to do this and learn how, the, how hot the pan gets and everything so this is going to be it. We're going to try it for the first time. This is the maiden voyage. Today's the day. On sear. Let me get a stool. Get a stool and come check it out. Now you do want all your meat to at least be making contact with the bottom of the pan. So if you have too much, and it looks like I actually might have too much here, <laughs> do all this including the tender ones at one time, you're gonna want to do it in two batches. Don't the You have not had dinner, little cookie monster. What? Let me one. Okay, so we've browned the rabbit and now we've taken that out of the pressure cooker so we want to start to saute um, the rest of the, I don't know, fixings for the dish. Um, we're gonna add about five ounces of uh, sliced mushrooms, um, one medium white onion, and then about three or four strips of bacon that we cut up into some fine pieces. So we're just gonna saute those for about five minutes uh, in the same pot. Stir those up a little bit. Then we'll add some spices once those have a chance to kind of saute a little bit. We'll leave that for about five minutes. Come back and check it. Dang, this is smelling good. There is no chance, I don't know why I'm surprised. There is no way you could put this much bacon onions and mushrooms in one place together and have them not smell good. That'd probably be good on some. All right, so that's done sauteing. Now we're gonna add um, a teaspoon of, hey Ryan, you wanna help me? All right, we're gonna add a teaspoon of oregano in there, just dump it in. Don't drop the dish. And a teaspoon of paprika. All right. And then we're gonna add three quarters cup of chicken stock. All right, be real careful, I'll spill this. Okay, hold it flat, watch your hand. Chicken stock. And then let's stir that up real quick before we add the rabbit back in. Oh yeah, that's something good. That's something good. Add the rabbit back in. We'll try to cover it up with some of this stuff. Rabbit on the loose. <laughs> uh, they are a spry little creature. All right, so we're gonna add the rabbit back in. We'll stir that up just to put, well, I can't. <laughs> well, it kind of buried a little bit. I want it to at least be down in the juice and have some of the bacon and onions on top of it. There's no way that's gonna turn out bad. So we're gonna put that, um, throw the lid back on the pressure cooker. And we're gonna let this pressurize and then um, we're gonna set this for probably between four and five minutes. I'm gonna put this on a chicken setting because I don't happen to have a rabbit setting. So we'll bring the time cook down. Why don't we say five minutes? Because I've got probably two pounds of meat in there. We'll go ahead, let me make sure that this is set to cook. 
build the pressure. We'll let that pressurize and we'll let that cook for five minutes. You guys listen, that's it. You, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. If you saw our goose catch clean cook video, I now know to clean dishes as I go. Thank you, sir. Look at that. Let me see that sink. I mean, it's cleaner than it was. Okay, now. Okay. If you think that hunting and cooking and cleaning doesn't lead to more than clean kitchens and good food, you're wrong. We've got an entire box of penne pasta, so while that rabbit... Sammy's going to want that for dinner. She's going to want this for dinner? Mm -hmm. she some? While that rabbit is cooking in the Instapot, watch out, this is hot. Um, we've got just a pot of boiling water here. We're going to add um, a small box of penne pasta. That's for the gravy. Uh, we're going to add that and just let this... Oh no! Uh, and just let this boil for about 10 minutes just until the pasta soft. We'll drain that off and then we'll return to the pot and cover it up. And this is going to serve as the base to our dish uh, where we put the rabbit and all the good fixings over top of it. All right. <laughs> so while this pasta cooks, we got to give credit for this recipe. We found a recipe called Instapot Rabbit on Happy Foods Tube. Um, and so we're going to give you a first-hand account of how that recipe turns out. It looks like it's going to be amazing. But thank you to those guys. We'll put a link to it down in the description. Uh, go check it out if you got a rabbit that you want to cook. You popping off. That's the sound of awesome being ready. All right, let's check it out and see how we did. Now watch out for the steam. Watch out for the drip. Alright, let's check it out. Check it out. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Alright, so what we're going to do here is just take the rabbit out uh, and set it aside for a minute. And then we're going to work on um, turning the rest of this into a nice thick sauce. So let's remove the rabbit. Then we're going to add just a little bit of, the recipe actually calls for half and half. And I don't have any of that. So I'm just going to use whole milk. And let's make sure we get these little pieces of tender one. Well, those things drew up a good bit, but they still feel really tender. We're gonna add a little bit of whole milk in lieu of half and half, and then um, some flour, and thicken this stuff up and turn it into more of like a thick gravy or a sauce that would go over the top of our pasta noodles, right? Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is just turn this back onto a saute. Get that started. Let me just add a little bit of milk. Whole milk. Whole milk in this case. That's, that's a lot of bit. <laughs> we got a lot of flour. That's a lot of bit. I want to make a lot of salt. Yeah. So we're going to stir that up. Yeah, go ahead. Stir it for us. Watch what you're doing. Be careful you don't burn yourself. That looks like a pretty good color to me. So we'll let that saute for just a couple minutes, then we'll add the flour, let that thicken up, and then we're ready to serve this. So this is going to be. This is going to be for the pasta. That's right. Well, we're going to put it over. I think what we'll do is we'll put the pasta on the plate, then the rabbit, and then we'll put the sauce over top of both. I think it's going to be really good. You want some? Mm. I thought you would. Okay. Ready? Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and add the flour. I just want you to all sprinkle it. it. Yeah, we're probably going to need all of it because I kind of went crazy with the milk. Mm. So <laughs> just sprinkle that across. Just like this. Yeah, you can. Actually, why don't you stop right there before we add all this? Yeah. We're just going to kind of do this to slowly say it's a taste, right? But we're just going to watch this thicken a little bit as we go. Yeah. Okay? Because I don't want it to get too thick, just like we don't want it to be too runny. It looks okay? brown. Like light brown, but also yellow or something. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we are. Now, the more you cook this, too, it's going to thicken up on its own anyway. But we are going to add some more flour, mm -hmm. okay? Let's turn this off. Yep. I started to move it like it was on a burner on the stove. <laughs> okay, that's about the right consistency. You agree, Mom? Looking pretty good? Yeah. Okay. Unplug it. That looks outstanding. All right, let's plate a couple of these things and give them a try, what do you think? Hurry, hurry, hurry. You get a big piece of that rabbit right on top? Yeah. This is hot. I want you to try it. Tell me if you like it, okay? Blow a little bit. Okay. 
All right. I what you think. Good. You like it? Cool. You want to play to that? Success. Cool. I'm going to get a different Six. fork. I want to try it too. Well, obviously, because I'm kind of sick. Huh? Obviously, you're Yeah, because Ryan's not feeling too good. Holy cow, that is hot. It's like burning my finger. Dad, can you yes. say tenderloin? Uh, I don't know where it is or what it is. It's the small piece on top. All right, let me give this a try. Uh, that's, it's good. It's amazingly good. I told you you cook everything delicious. <laughs> <laughs> From the mouths of babes. There you go. So you know it's true. That's delicious. That's what you call feel good food for sure. You guys, we're gonna go and eat this because it's getting late. It's really good and I wanna get it while it's hot. This is delicious. You should absolutely check out this yeah. recipe. This is unfortunately yeah. more of a, I don't know what you call it, a buy clean cook instead of a catch clean cook. But uh, what about a get clean cook? We're really <laughs> fortunate that we had a butcher <laughs> close by that actually had some rabbit for us. But um, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time. Hey, by the way, Drop us a thumbs up below if you want us to switch places next time and you want to see Afton do the cooking instead of me. And I don't know if you guys have seen Afton before, but she's a lot prettier than I am. So yeah. I'd recommend it. Hit that a thumbs up. A lot prettier than me. Mommy I'm not beautiful. even pretty, I'm handsome. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time.